Hey guys, today I'm going to make a new argument of why MTG headquarters should be unbanned. He is currently banned for life for, I believe, harassment under one of the social media policies. But Magic is very accepting of other individuals, as long as they apply to be a judge, including James Littlefield. So I wrote a thing video on him because it had to be done um, the reason it has to be done is he's a magic player he is a magic gathering store owner he is a magic judge or has judged events and he is actively looking for other magic players in his area he travels um, he's been to uh, Santa Clara. He's been to Las Vegas. I think he lives in Las Vegas. Uh, he also does online events. Um, you can see the events. And here is his list of charges. I'm not going to go over all of them because there's just uh, honestly too many to go over. But you can see that there are different dates. Um, and it is lewdness with child under the age of 14. So, it's not a good guy. He's not a good guy no matter how much you tell me that Alex Bocchini is a good guy and how kind he is and how friendly and how he smiles and how his girlfriend is awesome and such a big part of the community. I'm not going to believe you and I'm not going to believe that this guy is a good guy. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it comes down to look at the dates, look at the charges, and then look at the dates he was judging for. Crazy, no? So if MTG headquarters even found out just this one, he should be reinstated because he has done the community a lot of good. There are clearly loopholes. Uh, James Littlefield, uh, look at that name. It's very important, the brown coat it's his, it's his uh, username. It would be like MTG Line, right? So is anyone interested in the Las Vegas area want to play some magic today? With a sexual predator at, my, at his game store. I don't know how HQ found this. I don't know very much about... Uh, all I know is I'm sick. Um, I haven't eaten dinner and I'm not going to be able to stomach any food tonight. It's also like almost midnight. Uh, James Lynn Littlefield. He was judging pre-releases, which tend to have younger audiences because more casual. And I'll tell you an instance I saw in GP Houston, not recently, but the two years ago, I think it was 2015, 2016. Uh, I think 2014. Well, it was not the most recent GP Houston. It was the uh, instant before there. Um, so I had lunch with a bunch of, I guess, fans, I would say. Like, you might say, oh, why are you saying this? Well, it's still not, it's not real to me. I don't really want to be known. Like, I go to a game store purposely because people don't know which, who I am at that game store. And I find it fascinating and intriguing when a older gentleman he's probably 41 a little overweight average magic player uh, he sees someone who i think she looked very young maybe 18 19 and she was sitting by herself um, it was saturday around probably four no it was after lunch so it was like at least two and you know the guy approaches her asks, do you got trades and then she's like no and then she's like, you know, and he's like, oh, do you want to play a match? And, he, and then she's like, no, no, I'm waiting for like some of my friends to finish. And this continued on this like banter. So I didn't know if the guy was very inept at socially or if this was something like Frank Lepore. Uh, Frank, as we know, is does this very often is he hits on magic female. This is not something like that is 
This isn't something isolated to one person. It's not just Frank doing this. It's a bunch of store owners. It's a bunch of judges. It's a bunch of people. It's just human nature. Um, it's human nature. Um, some part of your population is going to be not the best, and they're going to be terrible human beings uh, that cannot change themselves, uh, like James. You, you ask, oh, felons and all, like, this is my personal belief. I'm going to, um, one of my partners in a business was a felon. I did not know at the time, and he did not tell me at the time, and other people knew, but they did not tell me. So I was partnered, I had a business, and we had a felon who had plead to a felony, and the felony was, um, it was, you know, sex related. Let's say it's a, I'm not going to go into details because then you can check it up. As soon as I found out, I dissolved the company. That's how I feel. Um, I feel that, yes, people can change. Yes, you don't want, you know, you paid your debt to society. And that's what the other partner said, that he paid his debt to society. I agree with that. But that doesn't mean I want to start a business with you. Right. Maybe other people want to, and maybe other people will, and maybe you'd be very successful, more far more successful than I am, because you had, you know, you went through a more difficult ordeal, and you likely got stronger because of it. But for me, um, no, no, people don't change. People do not change. I had, I was bullied in high school and middle school by this guy who was on a basketball team. And re, and I think I told you the story. Maybe a year or two ago, he contacted me for help. He had recently lost his job and he wanted me to help him because at the time, my, link, my LinkedIn is very, very strong. Um, it's pretty much perfect for what my business is. And he wanted me to help him get a job. He gave me his phone number and I asked my LinkedIn, you know, what should I do? And they said all to contact him. I still didn't contact him. 90% of my LinkedIn quote fans said, you need to contact him. Maybe he's going to apologize. And I know that if I contacted him, he just wanted something. And it's not that he wanted to give me an apology. He wanted me to help him find a job in that field that I'm an expert in. So if I give him a recommendation, he'd be hired in the next day because it's my recommendation, it's my reputation. You know, I'm that computer nerd. Um, back when I went to school, no one had computers, but I had a computer. I used to play that Survivor video game on it. Um, that was really fun. That's why I got a computer, was to play uh, survival, Survivor, the video game. At the end of the day, people don't change. Uh, you are who you are, I believe. And unless there's a crisis, a really life alternating, changing event, I don't want to be involved in that. Um, I don't want to have my partner be a felon. I don't want to have my partner having been engaged in something related to uh, inappropriate behavior. I don't want to work for a boss like that. I don't want to work, I don't want to have employees like that. Um, that's my personal preference. Like it's a private company. I, I purchased all of it now. So I have a hundred percent of my company back. I didn't even want to give up 20% of it because of such a bad experience I had previously working with another felon, uh, with, I almost did another felon. Jeez. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like you can be a good person, you can live your life, you can reincorporate. Um, there, there's some, felons felonies that i currently i don't believe should be felonies uh, i think drug felonies are very abusive and they are not really and this is my personal opinion i think those felonies are very different from felonies like this one like um yeah you know, felonies involving when you take advantage of someone who doesn't have the knowledge base because they're younger in this case under 14 that's not appropriate to me um, and that should never be okay. Uh, it should never be okay to take advantage of the members of our, in our society who are easily taken advantage of. They should be protected. And that's why we have statutory law 
is because we don't care why you did it. We don't care if she said yes. If she is under a certain age, you are guilty, guilty, guilty. And you're above a certain age, guilty, guilty, guilty. Like, we don't really care if she's the love of your life, she really loves you, she's not going to press charges. That's why we have this law in place because there's certain um, things where you, you know, you, you, get, you gotta get older to get a little wiser and realize, wait a second, this person is 31 and they are, you know, I'm, four, I'm 14, 12, that's not fair. Uh, that's that's very very abusive, and you. I don't think I, I don't think anyone wants to live in a society like that where um, that happens. But yeah, so that was kind of the offense. Um, I'm not going to go in detail, but it was sex related. And the moment I found out, I made a phone call, and they tried to talk me down, and I said no. Absolutely not. Absolutely, there is no wiggle room. There is no inch to give you did not tell me you knew that would influence my decision clearly and the answer is no i am strange i have a very core sense of ethics and those ethics have never really changed since middle school and my belief has always been that rarely do people change if the person is asking you for money all the time in middle school and now you're 25 30 and they have they have more money than you they'll still ask you for money they'll still ask you to cover the tab if the person bullied you in middle school they're going to try to bully you now for a job or a recommendation or a part-time job right that's what a lot of people want from me they want me to hire you quote part-time so you can use it as leverage to find a better job that happens a lot and I'm okay with that sometimes, and I'm not okay with that other times, and it depends on how you treated me in the past. People are people, and MTG headquarters, I met him, I talked with him, we went to IHOP. Inherently, he's a good person. Uh, Travis is inherently a good person. This guy is not. Uh, the fact that he was able to go to GPs, he was able to be part of the magic community and not just him but others like him um, we can go down the list of these promoted celebrities who have shred backgrounds um, personal demons if you will and i hope we don't go down that road because it is very ugly and it's all public um the the interesting part about this is with today's social media, today's records, criminal records, and all this stuff, like, you have to assume it exists somewhere. Um, it's just a matter of who has it and who can find it. So anyway, my personal opinion on this whole scenario is that MTG headquarters, he's not a criminal, he's not being, uh, he's... There are more villains to go after, bigger fists who are more destructive, who have destroyed more lives than MTG Headquarters. MTG Headquarters, he's a guy who likes opening packs and occasionally has, you know, an argument about the Second Amendment with Wedge. This guy is, I mean, fool me once. There's, what can you say? What what can I say? Um, the evidence is there. Um, and he's still, I mean, he's, he did battle for Zendikar when the charges were already filed. And he was still a judge. If Wizard of Coast cared so much about bringing, quote, good people, they would not promote certain people in our community and I've been very vocal about who those people are and I will be more vocal in the coming days um, the stories are very very insane um, you wouldn't believe it um, unless I accumulate enough evidence and quote screenshots right because that's all the raids now 
Um, I've heard of people, very big YouTubers, who have not sent out signed cards for many months and have made every excuse under the sun to save like a dollar. How much is a signed card? It's like a dollar. If a person donates $70 to you, uh, $10 for seven months, you can't send them a signed card for a dollar? Really? Um, people behave in ways that indicate who they are. People who... I'm going to be very, very brutal right now. And I just, I apologize. If you guys got to the end of this video, then you deserve my brutality on this situation. Because you guys probably more or less, you didn't click out, you didn't, you know, get out of, you know, you probably assume, I assume that you're more in line with my opinions on this topic. It is very hard to change who you are very hard. I volunteer and I foster dogs. And when I go to the animal shelters and when I go raise money using my marketing skills and when I foster dogs, uh, we have two new dogs. One's a husky with bl one brown eye, one blue eye. And the other one is a very pretty, I think it's a, it's a mutt, but I think it, it's a very, it's like, it looks like a boxer almost. When you um, work with animals as much as I do, volunteer-wise, and it's because you love them, you are willing, willing to go out. You're willing to get ticks on your carpet. You're willing to pay $800 for heartworm medication. You're willing to do, deal with tape, um, what's it, uh, round worms. What's it, round worms? Um, tape worms, yeah, it's round. Round worms are gross because it, at some stage, it comes out in their poo as this little white, Thing with Jake, it, it it's the sickest thing ever. My lawn was absolutely wrecked because I didn't know they had um one of the foster dogs Snowy had roundworms and you know the poo was just kind of there, and I was like oh my blank and you know Norman had to get medicated just that day when I found out. Um, if you know the only people I see volunteer. Like volunteer without wanting something, without, you know, a judge is a volunteer. The liability is on you, which is a coach who won't recognize who you are. The only people I see volunteering um, and doing these things uh, for just because they feel like it should be done, it's a different breed of people. And I can identify them instantaneously. I know who, it sounds crazy. I know you guys are going to hate me for saying this. I volunteered when I was in middle school. I volunteered at the Sunrise Retirement Home, which I used to walk to, which, by the way, in my neighborhood. It was a retirement home. I used to play piano. I used to call bingo. I used I went one night. Um, Thursday night was bingo night, and then piano was Saturday night. And I didn't go because my parents wanted me to go. I didn't go because, you know, I had to go. I went because I knew it brought joy to them. And I did this all throughout high school. You know, if you're asking why I'm not cool, why I didn't go out to parties and stuff, I did this. That's what I did. And I can recognize people because I see them at the shelters, the animal shelters. I see them who fostered my dog groomer, for instance. He's just like me. He's a dog person and his wife is a dog person. And they're great. And I think, they, you know, if you need a dog groomer in Houston, I give you the phone number right away. And I guarantee you, you're going to really this is the best dog groomer and I should know because I had many dogs and fosters. There are certain people, um, you don't foster a dog without sacrificing. And I know that beforehand, I know it's going to cost me at least $2,000. There's heart warms, almost guaranteed heart warms, almost two. There's all types of gross stuff that I didn't know when I first started, but I'm okay with. Um, and you know, um, you know who, cares and you know who doesn't um i can tell you hq does care i don't agree with him i may not like him but he does care a lot about magic the gathering he does care a lot about subscribers and travis Wu, i do like him and i do agree with him most times uh, obviously outside the controversial issues but um 
you know, they should not be, be, be people banned. Um, I think at some point in time, you have people in Wizard Coast who, I don't know why, why they do this, but they cannot identify good people. They clearly cannot in this case um, with James Littleton or Littlefield. Anyway, 20 minutes out. Bye.